if you've not already got a copy of Blender you can get one free uh, by clicking the link in the sidebar there which will take you to this page here and as you can see it's available for Windows, uh, Linux and uh, Mac OS and you've got two versions here if you've got the, the older type uh, Mac the, uh, the, the PowerPC type you've got uh, a link here and um, you've also got the, uh, the the later Intel type, um, which you can just click on here. So go ahead and download Blender, and uh, um, you know put it in the Applications uh, folder, and uh, drag the application link to your dock. So we're ready to go. So that's your first job to do. The next thing to do is to open the Blend file or download the Blend file, I should say, which has got the original 20th Century Fox uh, logo. And uh, so if you click on the second link, and uh, you can either directly open the file in Blender or save file. You may as well go ahead and open the file with Blender. So um, click on there. Shouldn't take too long to do. Blender's now opening up, and we've now got the 20th Century Fox logo to customize. So I'm using um, a pretty much bog standard MacBook to do this. It's uh, the, the Intel MacBook. And um, so we want to edit the 20th Century Fox logo. Don't worry about all the controls down here. Um, to be honest with you, I know nothing about these animation programs. Um, but I'm just explaining to you how I uh, modified my logo to work for me. Um, I know s I did have a little bit of difficulty selecting the, uh, the different parts of the text. So um, all you need to do basically is use the command button. I'm using the mouse pad, I'm not using a separate mouse, is by using the command plus click and you can select the different elements, so if command plus uh, click for the 20, uh, command plus click for century, command plus click for fox. So um, let's go ahead and command plus click, wrong one, try again, command plus click 20th and then press the tab button and I'm going to change that to ST in, in blocks. Uh, 20th, command plus click. Ah, don't forget to click the tab button to go back. Command plus click, tab. I'm going to change that to 21. And then tab again, go back to century. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to change the fox to command plus click, uh, tab. S T A R K I E. Okay, well that's uh, a little bit wide, so press Tab, and we can use either of these two buttons here. See the the blue square and the red triangle. The red triangle will allow us to shift the whole text left and right. If we go to the blue square, we can actually shrink things a little bit to fit okay similarly we can do this kind of thing okay so that looks pretty centralized I'm okay with that um, at which uh, state we're ready to actually render the animation now this is the bit that's going to take some time um, on this uh, MacBook I've got as I say pretty much a one year old bog standard MacBook will render the movie in about three, three and a half hours. But before we do this, we need to be careful to change some of these settings. And I found what works for me is AVI JPEG. And uh, I also use this, this setting here, the 720 foot by 576, which now has set the size. Although I'm not 100% sure about this once it's rendered. But anyway, that's that's what works for me. And then what you have to do finally is click animation. And this is going to take some time, guys. So it's going to, you know, probably be running in the background for two or three hours. And if you just take a look at this window here, in the top left-hand corner, we're on frame one. There are 600 frames altogether. And uh, once you finally get to frame 600, just leave it for a couple of minutes because it may be still in the process of rendering the final frame. And uh, 
then you're ready to preview your movie. Now once you've saved the animation or once it's finished rendering you're probably wondering where the heck is it because I'm using a Mac and according to this it's in C uh, in a folder called render. Um, what you'll find actually if you open up finder and uh, go to Macintosh HD directory you'll find that Blender's actually put a folder in there called C. Um, if you're going to be using this application you may want to change things but to be quite honest with you I doubt I'll ever use this again uh, so I, you can delete all this when you're finished so if you look in C under render um, there is the um, the fully rendered file and there it is playing no sound on this you have to once you finish rendering and you've got your uh, movie you need to import that into iMovie or Final Cut or whatever other editing program you're using and add some sound. So um, something to bear in mind by the way, um, you need to save this as an AVI file. If you save it as other formats you could end up with something like this. You could end up with 600 um, JPEGs, each one a rendered image, um, which isn't so good. So um, just take care when you're actually you know what you're actually rendering are you rendering individual pictures or you're making a movie and as I say the one that works for me is the um, the AVI JPEG uh, style and you know that seems to work fine okay so I've opened up iMovie and imported the uh, the clip that uh, we've just rendered in Blender and uh, right let's let's get this over here so that is playing fine and all we need now is some sound. Now you can download the 20th Century Fox uh, theme music from a variety of places on the internet. Um, what I did actually, I just used this application called Wiretap Pro to grab the sound uh, which is good enough for what I want to do just for this little intro and I've already saved it in iTunes so if I bring up iTunes, there it is. All we need to do now is drag the sound across and uh, let's see if it works. Let's get that back to the beginning. Right, that's fine. Uh, while we're here, you could um, you could do something interesting. Let's have a look at some video effects. Uh, we could have an aged film effect on this, which might make it look look uh, look a little more interesting. But uh, however you look at it, it's fairly straightforward to do. Once you've got your footage, you can just add some sound and from there we can share, what I like to do actually is use the export movie function and um, choose the largest size possible and just click export and uh, and then you're ready to upload to uh, to YouTube. Um, for those of you who haven't used iMovie very much, I don't know if you realise there is a, a direct link you can upload directly to YouTube I find that's quite useful but occasionally you'll get an error message back saying that it hasn't satisfactorily uploaded and you've got to go through the whole process again. I find it better to export it, save a copy and then upload it in the usual way up onto uh, YouTube. So I hope you find that useful, that's how I did it anyway and uh, thanks for watching.